It's been long enough. It's time for round five of the Bank Box Battle Series for pennies. Hey everybody, it's Rob the Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, it's been long enough. It's time to get round five done of this Bank Battle Box series with pennies, and we're gonna see once and for all if B of A, other than winning its first box and having a terrible last couple of boxes, can do a good job this time. Now I've got it in order from first to worst because I wanted to see if B of A, knowing what it had to beat, could beat it. Of course, the stats are already in the box. They're just not on the sheet yet. That being said, we're gonna go Wells Fargo first, Chase second, B of A last. You'll recall, Wells Fargo has won two of the four rounds so far and has a pretty commanding lead, 27 and a half points to 20 points for Chase and a mere 15 points for B of A. That also being said, we've struggled with some good wheat penny finds lately and some air and variety finds. Matter of fact, we have only found one air or variety in all of the 12 boxes we've hunted so far and as far as Wheaties, we've only gotten three below 1940 out of 12 boxes. So, first and foremost, we're hoping for good old finds. And second of all, we're hoping for an error variety or two in these three boxes. No more lollygagging. Let's get this hunt started. We're kicking it off with Wells Fargo, like I said. I've checked all the boxes. They're all circulated. That's a good sign. And I didn't see any enders on the few ends that I've already looked at. So, we'll kick it off with this roll right here from Wells Fargo, and let's see how many goodies we're gonna get. Roll number three is gonna yield our first find of the box, and it is a wheat penny. The year, 1954 out of Philly. Don't see a lot of 54, 55 Phillies in my area, so I'll take it for sure, and on the board. Roll number 11 is going to yield a first four into the box. It's a Canadian. It's a bird scent, too. Pretty crazy. 1967 Canadian bird scent. Trashy, but still a find. Roll 14, second wheat penny of the box. It was facing me. 1952 out of Denver. And we'll take it. Roll 15, almost an instant replay. Another 1952. Out of Denver, we penny number three. Just pulled out roll 17 and flipped it around. And we've got a 1942 wheat penny ender. It's gonna be weedy four. Let's see if there's friends. Here's that ender. Most certainly a 1942, worn like it's older, but I find a lot of worn 40s. We'll take it though. And like I said, four Wheaties. Same roll, and there was a friender in there. 1949 out of Philly. That one's not in bad shape. So that makes five wheat pennies and 17 rolls. We could be onto something here. Roll 25 of the Wolf's Fargo box marks the halfway point. It's going to give us a 1958D wheat penny. That makes six halfway through the box. Just grabbed roll 32 out of the box, and we have another wheat penny ender. Looks like it might be cleaned. Wonder if it's old. Wheat Penny Ender. 55D. Not old, just damaged and possibly cleaned. Same roll. Another Wheat Penny. Give me number eight. Looks pretty good. It's a 44D. Let's check it for that 44D over S. Highly unlikely, but we got to take a look. Hard to tell from that picture. Let me wipe it down just a little bit and see if there's anything going on above that D. Nothing special about it other than I like the toning for sure. 1944 D. Wheat penny number eight. Roll 39. Got a wheat penny facing us and it's a 1942 out of Philly. That's our second 1942 and it's still the oldest of the box. One more for double digits. Can we get more than that? Roll 49, made me wait for it, but we've got our 10th wheat penny of the box. A 56D, 
Nothing special other than the fact that it makes 10 and that makes me happy. So we finished the Wells Fargo penny box to kick us off for this bank battle series. We got 10 Wheaties, I'll take it. Nothing really old, couple of 42s, but that's about it. I also kept this one right here, just to show you. It's a 1999 and you always wanna check them for the wide AM. Wide AM means that there's gonna be a gap between the A and the M. But when you look at this coin, you can see it has some pretty nice machine doubling on there. But I wanted to point that out for those that don't understand the difference between double dies and machine doubling. You can clearly see, especially on some of these letters here, that there is a little bit of a flattened, uh, but looks like a second strike, but it's just the die deterioration that happens after striking so many of these. It actually doesn't get as flush and it kind of bounces just a little bit and leaves a little die doubling there. That is not double dyed, that is machine doubling, but wanted to show it to you anyway. On top of that, we found a zinc penny that's been pretty much worn down to the zinc. Crazy. We got one Canadian, 359s, a pretty nice 68S, and then 169S, trashy, but not the DDO. Not a bad box to kick us off. 10 Wheaties, I'll take that all day. We'll move on to Chase now and see if they can score double digits as well. Just cracked into the Chase box, got the first roll out, and 75% uh, of the way through the roll, we've got a Wheat Penny. It's another 52D, I've been seeing a lot of these lately, but I'll still take it because it gets me on the board early. 49 rolls to go. Very next roll, roll number two, we're gonna have a young head kicking us off early. 1963, we'll take it. Roll number five, the drought is over. The drought is over. Bingo was his name-o. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't even care that it's pretty corroded. Besides it being a little corroded, it actually has decent detail. Probably a 1900s one, 1900 through 1909. Before I flip it, let's see if there's a mint mark just so I can take a peek. Looks like just damage, but it caught my eye when I was looking at it, which is what made me put it under the scope. We'll take a closer look at that later. Oh, it's a toasty one. It's a toasty one. I... May not get a date on this bad boy. Oh, I might. I might get one. I'll put gloves on after this guy. Sorry, I was excited to start this hunt. Let's see if I can get a date. So, I think I see 190. And I don't know if that's a 9 or just some damage. Let me, it could be a 7. Let me clean this up a little bit and see if I can get a better date off of it for you guys. I think in 1900 something, which is about what I thought based on the back of it or the reverse. Let me soak it in a little bit of warm water, wash my hands, and I'll be back. So after a light soak in warm water, I was able to pull the date off a little bit better. I'll put it under the scope. The front is still pretty trashy, but I think you guys will be able to see without a doubt. 1901. 1901, and take a look at the reverse. That's pretty good detail. We've got some pretty good detail on the back, which makes me think with the corrosion on this and the detail that this might have been a Doug Indian head but I don't care. I've got a 1901 Indian head penny in the fifth roll of the box. And the first one I have found in I don't know how long. So this feels good. We've got an Indian head penny early on, 1901. Roll number 11, gonna get our second wheat penny of the box. It was facing me, I saw it was a 46 from Philadelphia. Not in bad shape either. So a 52. A 46 and a 1901 Indian. Roll number 16. Gonna get our third wheat penny of the box. 
And we get to reveal it. 45 Denver. So that is now the oldest wheat penny of the box. I can say that because we have an Indian. Roll number 22, and I'm gonna have another wheat penny. Got a nice one in front of it too, but it's an 88D. This one is the last year, 1958 Denver. Still, another wheat penny for the collection. We'll take it. All right, fourth wheat penny of the box, plus an Indian. Roll 23 is gonna give us a Canadian bird scent. 1967, I've been finding these a little more lately, makes me happy, and it's another find. Roll number 33 is gonna yield us a Bermuda coin. One cent, 1995, with a pig or a boar or a hog on the back, I'm not sure which, but I've seen them before, and I'll take it again. Roll number 38, we're gonna get our fifth wheat pen in the box. This one is gonna be 1950 on the nose and in good shape as well. All right, we'll take it. Five wheat pennies and an Indian. 12 more rolls plus the rest of this to go. Looks like roll 43 is gonna give us our sixth wheat penny of the box. It was already facing me. Just standard 44 out of Philly. Very common find, but guess what? Ironically, it's the oldest wheat penny of the box. All right, we finished that box of Chase pennies, and you know what? A little bit light on the Wheaties. We did find six, the oldest being a 1944. Pretty common. But we found an Indian head from 1901. Wish it was in better shape, but probably was found mainly because of the condition. So I'll take it that way, no matter what. We did find three foreigns, 459s, five pretty nice coins, as well as 169S, and as you know, it is not the DDO. Indian's gonna score a lot of points. This box definitely beat the Wells Fargo box, and I'll tell you, it's gonna be tough for B of A, who's already in last, to do better than this. But, can they redeem their last two boxes and at least score a good box? Let's find out. Roll number one of the B of A box, and they're starting us off early. Don't know if that's a good sign for them, but I'll take it. And it's a 1945. I don't think there's a mint mark on there. Nope, just damage. But we'll take a 1945 Wheat Penny in roll one, and really, the beginning of roll one. Roll number four, and I'm a little excited. I don't know why I get excited whenever I see a really worn Wheat Penny back. Because typically it's 40 for me, but that just looks good. The color looks right too. Is it gonna be old or is it just fooling me again? It is old. It's just a 1920 common Philadelphia minted wheat penny, but I love seeing oldies in the box. And I wish there was a mint. I wish it was a teens, but beggars can't be choosers. I will definitely take a 1920 wheat penny in the box, second of the box, as far as weeds are concerned, and we're only four rolls in. Come on, B of A, let's get it done. Roll five is gonna give us a foreign, and it's a Canadian, and it's going to be in the 70s or 80s. Oh no, it's actually an earlier one, 68. I knew it wasn't a young head, so I knew it had to be post 64, but I didn't think it was gonna be in the 60s based on the color. Still, 1968, good find. Roll number eight. Got another wheat penny back showing, and it could be old as well. Could just be the one in front of it making it look worse. That's a little better than I thought. But it is a 49D, and the front's not too bad. Three Wheaties in the box, nothing in the 50 so far. Roll number 13, gonna have our fourth wheat penny for B of A already. This one's a 53D, it was facing me. But, I'll take it, and the irony is, that I said I had no 50s yet. Well, now we do. All right, let's get back to the hunt. Roll 14, another wee penny, number five. 44D, I guess we should check for the 44D over S, why not? No, 
None of the indicators are there for a 44D over S. If you guys have watched my other video where I showed me finding a 44D over S and searching for it, you really want to see a hook above that D right about here. And you'd want to see some of the S above it. And I don't see anything at all that suggests that's a 44D over S. Still, another wheat penny for the box. Roll 15. Third straight roll in a row for B of A. And I see a wheat penny. Slid them down and I saw a 55 Denver staring right back at me. 1955 Denver, decent shape as expected for 55, at least you'd hope so. Boom, six Wheaties, one pre 30s. Roll number 26, and we're gonna have our seventh wheat penny of the hunt. Did you see it? I flattened down the roll as I got towards the end, and I sure enough exposed a beautiful wheat back. It is a 52D, and we've been finding a lot of those lately. I don't think we found one yet so far in the B of A box, but now we have. I'll go ahead and add it here. We have six post 40 and one pre 30. Roll 31 is gonna give us a four and find this time. Canada, 1990. Same roll. This time, a trash Canadian penny. I don't even know. Oh, it's a commemorative, I believe. Yep. Terrible shape. We'll add it though to the fines and retire it and get back to the hunt. Well, we finished that box of B of A pennies and you know it started off really hot in the last 15 rolls? Nothing. We did pull out a 1969 S at least at the end, but that's about it. Still, we got seven wheat pennies and one from the 20s. I'll take that. That's a pretty good hunt for B of A, at least for B of A lately for me. We also found three foreigns and two pretty nice coins that I'll be rolling up as well. Now we need to get all the scores put in the score sheet and see who came out first, second, and third. I'm pretty sure that Chase Bank box is going to be first. But will B of A hold out a second place this time over Wells? Or will Wells once again beat B of A? I'll be right back once I get them into the spreadsheet and let you know how we did. All right, I've got the scores plugged in the penny box battle score sheet. Wells Fargo came in with 19 and a half points. One of its worst boxes of the hunt so far. Chase took that round pretty comfortably. Of course, whenever you find an Indian head penny in a box, it's going to score well. 42 points. And then B of A came in second this time. Obviously better than its last few boxes, but really no stellar boxes yet. That being said, Wills Fargo, even though it lost some points and Chase made up some ground, is still edging out halfway through the series by one point over Chase. And even though B of A did make up a little bit of points, they're still behind. All right, that should do it for this wrap-up. We're halfway through the series. Wells Fargo's in the lead, but it's anyone's game halfway through. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. We got one. And thanks for watching.